Do Make Say Think are an instrumental band whose members all call Toronto, Ontario home. A functioning outfit for more than 20 years, Do Make Say Think's core configuration consists of Justin Small, Charles Spearin, Ohad Benchitrit, David Mitchell, and James Payment. And together, they've toured the world and released some hugely influential records. Their latest album is called Stubborn Persistent Illusions. It's out now via Constellation Records and will bring the band to a city likely near you later this year. A couple of days after their triumphant album release show at the Danforth Music Hall in Toronto on June 10th, 2017, I went to Charlie's house where I met with him, Justin, and Ohad for a conversation about cinematic music and film scoring awards, the influence of the musical suite Pictures at an Exhibition by the Russian composer Modest Muzarsky, generic signifiers like post-rock, how drummer Jimmy Payman almost had his foot amputated in the weeks before the aforementioned Danforth Music Hall show, how Charles must balance his duties in broken social scene with those in Do Make Say Think and other things, and much, much more. Sponsored by Pizza Trocadero, The Bookshelf, and Planet Bean Coffee, this is Do Make Say Think on the 330th episode of Creative Control with your host, me, Vishkana. I think for the purposes of people listening, maybe each of us should identify each other by voice and name. I think that would be the easiest thing to do so that the, as we go, you know, you right. know why I would suggest such a thing. Why don't we start over here? Okay, I'm Justin Small. This is the sound of my voice. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the show. You've been on the show before. Why are you welcoming me back to the oh, show? Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you for having me again. No. Last time was just a, a Skype conversation. Yes, that's right. Not. We did a Skype conversation because you were doing that, uh, what was it, a song a week? Yes, that? that's right. Is that still going? Nope. It was only for one year. One calendar only year. Only a year. Only a year. One oh. song a week for a whole year. That, yeah. That, well, what did and you actually learn? Did, I actually did an extra one. It was like 53 songs. I was like, hey, wait a second. You know, my last one, I was like, this is the last one. And so I typed up, and you're like, you're already done. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, sorry. Right. Well, one more bonus track. Well, it's good to have you back. Yeah, it's thank you. Back. And you, sir? I'm Charles, Charles Spearin from Charles. the band Do Make Say Think. <laughs> nice to have you in my house, Fish. I permit you into the country now that you've identified yourself. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks for having me. It's a lovely, uh, lovely home. Thanks so much. Do you make? What do you do in this living? This is a living room, sort of. Yeah, nook? this is. I, this is like a, an office living room. The that's technically the living room. Yeah, that's right. I see it now. Um, tech for all the technicians. It's got a couch and it's uh, got a piano, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. The like piano is the piano is part of the studio as well. This is kind right. of the studio. Right. This is where I mix on Pro Tools. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. don't have any outboard gear, but oh, it's got all that stuff. Right. Which we don't really use much in yeah. here anyway. <laughs> but then in the garage is the rehearsal space. So oh, okay. We, we all rehearse here in the garage. Um, the shelf showcases the fruits of his labors in this room. Oh, yes. I, I see the Juno Awards and uh, some... <laughs> what, what is that other thing there? Are those all Juno Awards? There's four Juno Awards and then some weird sculptures that I made to try and make it look like more. <laughs> some stone carvings. Yeah. Well, this is a nice Landic Jazz Award. Um, Congratulations. That's a, uh, an award for... Oh, yes. What is that exactly? Your spoken I, word record. I took, I, I took a sculpture course at Central Tech. Oh. And that's a maquette. <laughs> well, it's lovely. It's a lovely home, and those are lovely sculptures. Congratulations. Thanks very much. And you? Ohad. Ohad Benchitri. Hi, Ohad. How are you? Along with the weird name. <laughs> Other than you. What? <laughs> Why are you insulting my name? <laughs> yeah, you do have a weird yeah. name. Ohad Benchitrit. Yeah. What is the origin of that name, if I might say? Like Is- the- Israeli. Israeli, okay. Yeah. And so do people often say it wrong? At oh, Starbucks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what do you get? They say it wrong everywhere. 
What do they say at the Starbucks? Well, they say Chad, which freaks Chad me out a... because I can't possibly look like a Chad. Do you spell it out for them? Uh, no, say... I just go with whatever they say. Oh, uh, okay. Well, O H A D. People just assume that the C is like the O is a, a C. Over, overzealous. Right, yeah. right, right. Well, <laughs> yeah. Now you and I haven't spoken uh, on the record in I don't know a long time. I went to your studio, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I guess about eight years ago. Eight years ago, yeah. Are yeah. you still there? Yep. Same still place. Same place. So you, uh, Charlie, saying you have stuff that you, you making records for people in your in your home? No, or? no, just generally the things that we all do together. Okay. And and generally it's a really close friend. It wouldn't be somebody I don't know. You don't have clients per yeah, se. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, except they do sound film soundtrack work. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The, congratulations! You two just won an award, didn't you? You and Justin. Oh, I, I and Justin. In uh, the fall. We won in the fall. Uh, yeah. So the LA I'm flying by. Yes, I know. The LA Scream Fest. LA Scream Fest. Yeah. We 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 inadvertently wrote the score to a horror film. Uh, I think they were. Quite That's a true horror film if it surprised you that you, were, <laughs> you made a soundtrack yeah. for it. No, it, it What's going to happen next? That's it, us. <laughs> it, it surprised me that we made the soundtrack. I think it surprised everybody that it turned into like uh, a horror movie oh. and was celebrated as such. I think the director was intending to make kind of a, a Tarantino-style grindhouse. Sure. And he just kind of went overboard with a lot of things. And then they were like, this is a scary horror movie. And he's like, okay. <laughs> You've won an award. <laughs> like, great. Well, that's a weird thing. You put something out in the world and it gets received and yeah. pigeonholed in a certain way, yeah. right? When you did, you guys see the script? Go ahead. Like, did you? No, no, much later than that. Uh, for this particular movie, yeah. Do you do a bunch of film scores? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of our primary job right now. And it's primarily YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how did you get into that? Mostly, I think at the beginning it was kind of. Uh, through editors I would I that you know would meet and they'd be like oh we put your music in for temp and they you know oh like they, I do make say think yeah they do make say think music in this right. temp and we you know and then we hire somebody to do it and then we're like well you could hire us <laughs> and then we met Bruce McDonald through Kevin our first movie was uh, Idaho Peak called Idaho Peak and we maybe did that in 2004 2004 Idaho Peak well, yeah. who's, whose film was that Aubrey Nealon is okay. the director, and he is now uh, has won a bunch of Canadian Screen Awards for his writing in some really popular Canadian show. I can't remember. Okay, now. but okay. It's, I don't watch TV much, so I, I know he's got his job in that. But I know we got those first early gigs. I think through Arts and Crafts because they were like, "We want Broken Social Scene to write this, and we want Leslie Feist to write this," and they went, "They're too expensive." <laughs> Here's Justin and Ohad. <laughs> <laughs> and, we were like, okay. and we just ended up kind of building a client base of people that we hopefully will continue to bring us work. Is it a thing where you see the visual images and you're trying to, to make yeah. music that reflects what's going on? Is that the deal? Yeah. That's kind of it. What are they called? The rushes? No, it's not a rush. No, you actually have the film. You actually you have the film. Or at least a rough cut. Right. And then at some point you need the final cut. You, you're in a band that I think, because people don't know what to do with do make say things sometimes. They don't mm -hmm. know how to talk about it. I've struggled with it probably in my time. I don't know. I don't remember. Probably not. I'm good. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> my, no. mother, my mother actually describes it best. If I can just sure. throw in my mother's description of the band. She said, you can't sing along to it. You can't dance to it. You can't talk over it. And you can't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> that's your that's your own mother saying that. That's not good. Probably but she, but she, that's not to say she doesn't like it. She just doesn't understand. Right. Right. So. Right. So I think a lot of people, when they try to describe it, they suggest it's cinematic. Yeah. Because there's no right. singing generally. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They've had a couple of people guest on stuff, but that's an interesting position because then people take your stuff and they put it in their own movies. Yeah, but I think the ironic thing is. The, the things that people will use to describe us as cinematic are the songs or the tracks on the records that they say make us cinematic are the songs they couldn't possibly actually use in a film. Because I think the stories are too vivid and the chances of it actually lining up perfectly with whatever our storyline or visual in the film. So what ends up getting used are always our little like three minute interlude songs. They're the ones that they come back to over and over again. And not like the big what we consider, I guess, the core do makes idea. Sure. Like a Freddy or a Raishula. Yeah. Is it something, is it, is it the kind of reaction that you resent more than you appreciate? Nope. No, 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 no. The slightest. Because I would say, if someone were to say, like, your music made me picture something. Yeah. Because that's what, what someone's saying, right? right. It's cinematic. Mm -hmm. 
it actually triggered something else in me. Like it yeah. made me think of something, a whole other sense. I would think you would be like, that's pretty amazing actually that we could make something that makes someone think of another medium. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, th yeah. I agree. I think that's more what they mean. They're not necessarily saying it would be great for film soundtracks. They're saying cinematic in the sense that, that it, it brings them images. And yeah. I agree. And I think that is a compliment and it's, it's a nice way to, to, to listen to music, just to try, if it transports you into some other place. Right. Anyway. Were you in turn as a band ever, or are you ever inspired by film, by things you see, per se? I mean, not, not as a band, maybe individuals. Yeah. Um, it, it's not something we reference when we're writing music together. Yeah. We don't say, uh, I mean, we maybe we do. We reference all kinds of different things to try and, you know, talk to each other about music. There's not enough adjectives in the English language for music, so we're constantly <laughs> grabbing at sure, different yeah. things to, to try and describe it. So uh, definitely we'll be referencing colors and, and shapes and things like that, right. you know, randomly grabbing at them to try and, you know, convey our ideas to each other. But it's not a, you know, we're not going to say reference a specific film. Oh my god, oh, I just saw... Uh, Spartacus. Yeah, Spartacus. <laughs> we, have a, yeah. we have a Spartacus part in one of our songs. Do you have a Spartacus part? Yeah. Well, we, we call it We Spartacus call it that. Yeah. Why is it called the Spartacus part? What song it's is it? It's kind of a Roman kind of... I don't know, there's it's a... triumphant D, yeah, trumpet Oh, part. It's, yeah. yeah, it just feels like... It feels like the kind of horn line you would hear in an old 1950s Hollywood film like Spartacus, or at least that's... Kind of what song are we talking about? Ontario Plates? Do we Ontario call it Ontario Plates? Yeah, it's no. called Ontario Plates. Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's called Ontario Plates. We have working titles for all our songs, and we end up sticking with the working titles. Right. And so when people refer to the actual song titles, right. often we can't remember what song <laughs> it really is. I yeah. sometimes think that your uh, song titles are a little inside jokes, because I don't always get them. Sometimes I do. Yeah. I think they're funny, but I sometimes think they're just things you guys probably talked about. or Some of it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot of the time we sort of... I've find ourselves in a position where we're like, oh no, the record's coming out, and none of these songs are titled. <laughs> like, you know, it's a, I, I had a very similar conversation with John McIntyre or Tortoise, where he said they don't have anything. Mm -hmm. They literally have nothing until someone badgers them to come up with the artwork, and they're like, oh shit, yeah, <laughs> they don't have need... any titles for these songs. <laughs> yeah. So they just make them up like as the artwork, like the day the artwork is due. Mm -hmm. That's not you guys. Uh, half. Have, 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 have. <laughs> we badger ourselves until we run out of time. Yeah. <laughs> Still don't know what doing. Yeah. Oh, we make a, we make an effort to try and come up with titles, but it's basically we won't, we will never agree on a title sure. until we have to. You know. It's but then like, you let go of the thing, and the titles get ascribed with all this meaning from idiots like me, right? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, they called it this. It must mean something amazing. And you're just like, uh, just get that out of well, it. No, no, just send no, them. No, them. No, <laughs> no, just send them the artwork. It's fine. <laughs> no, there is, a, there is a middle ground. Actually, a lot sure. of the titles do have meanings to us. And, and that's why it, it takes us a long time to try and find yeah. uh, you know, words that will sort of suit the sound of the song as well as kind of what we're hoping to portray with it. So it's right. not, they're not just random collections of words which you know well maybe some of them are i'm not going to say which ones yeah but uh, we really do try to have as much um kind of uh, emotional content in the music and and the title can ob obviously sort of add to that yeah sure of, like, uh, like, like, uh, like the math equation on the new album yeah yeah that's, that's just complicated <laughs> the i can't remember the equation the, neither do we but basically it's the distance the, to the horizon right it's how far you can see depending on how high you are off the ground is this, I know there's, uh, from what I read, I haven't talked to you guys about this, but my understanding is that uh, some of the motifs for this record were inspired by poem, is that right? The whole, the whole idea was inspired by the poem, or at least we, we, we talked really, really early on about a concept, and we fooled around with the concept for forever, not really ever dialing it in, and... I think we were just starting to use it as an excuse to get into the rehearsal space again and go, okay, well, if we just keep writing, it'll coalesce later and we'll figure out what the concept is. And we kept moving and moving it. Uh, but towards the very end, I think that's what, it skirted around something we've been talking through the whole time, but never really had, had touched on in a very specific way. And then the poem was just something that, I think it got brought up pretty early on. And it did. Then abandoned. And then we, but the one thing that we kind of came back to was this idea of uh, pictures at an exhibition, and just liking the way the music tied into every painting. There's a journey, a walking thing, and so 
the poem was was one of our ways to do what we thought was really musically wonderful about that piece of music. And uh, yeah, and then at the end, I think it started coming together. And then our song titles, which never happened before, they actually started getting written around the idea. So they weren't as random as they may have been on other sure. records. So the idea was inspired by a poem. And I want to find out more about the poem in just a moment. But then you're saying that the as the as you were more inspired, it went from just the poem to this notion of like traveling around a museum. Is oh, it's saying or gallery. This is this a uh, no a, no. A I got this. Me, all, yeah. Did I get that all wrong? Yeah, okay, this, great. Yeah. I'm glad I got that all wrong. <laughs> I was trying to I, I, unpack I, what you said. <laughs> there. The uh, he's ref, oh he's referring to. Um, uh, Pictures at an exhibition by Modest Mazorsky. The, the class poem is pieces. oh okay, and the yeah. poem is not related. Oh, to that. I see. Okay. We were looking for a way. Um, this, I'm sorry, we're talking amongst. <laughs> uh, we've we've been through this with each <laughs> other so yeah, many times. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm kind of, you know, like yeah. there's people, myself included. There's people listening, and myself yeah. included, that don't exactly know of what course. you're talking about. Of course. So that's why I just want to clarify. The the idea. I'm a, ho- I'm a good host. Yes, you're you're right? fantastic. Yeah, yeah. You are fantastic. You are. We're not the most articulate guys. No, right? no, no. Um, but the idea of, of pictures at an ex- exhibition by Modest Mazorsky is a really simple, beautiful way of presenting a narrative through music. Okay. It starts with the trumpet line, um, which is called the walking theme, and uh, and then it goes on to describe a painting, and I then see. it comes back to the walking theme, and it's basically um, uh, Mazorsky. Uh, walking through a picture, uh, uh, an ex- exhibition of his dead artist's work. I see, okay. A dead artist friend's work. Oh, Sorry, not okay. his dead artist. His the, dead, the artist dead artist friend's he owned work. at the time, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so it's, it's, just, it's just a really simple way because it describes uh, an internal mood and then it describes a painting and then it describes the mood and then the painting and, it, and then they kind of blend together and at the end, it's this beautiful description of a painting and then you realize by the end of it that he's not describing the painting anymore. He's describing his love for his friend. Oh, I see. It's so triumphant. It's just it's just such a simple um, concept for for a piece of music. And we were looking for something like that that uh, that could be could could take our music on a, on a bit of a journey like that. I and see. the poem was something that we had kind of tossed around early. Just the sense of. Uh, how uh, daydreams can float away. You can have these different thoughts about, you know, your your life, your past, your future, anything like this. And we, had, had, you know, earlier on we had thought about, you know, the um, the idea of each song being a different person, and maybe how they're viewing a certain in the same incident. Oh, I see. You know? Right, right. And we went through all kinds of different uh, different potential storylines, and some of them. Some of them were too dark. Some of them were too dark or too heavy, yeah. and some of them were uh, yeah. uh, too complicated to really present. Um, you know, we needed something simple. And this poem, which is, it's not the whole poem at all. It's one line from a poem. Um, it's a, a Buddhist poem about essentially a meditation technique. But the the line in the poem is. Um, and you lose um, your mind oh, you, to something outside. Be like the ship captains watching her crow fly. When nowhere to alight on the boundless sea, return, return again. Something like that. Wow. Yeah. Good memory, so, Justin. That was great. Yeah. So the image is basically uh, if you're on a boat crossing the ocean uh-huh. with a crow on the boat with you. And the crow can take off and go as far as it wants, but eventually it has to circle back and be and come back to the boat. Right. So the idea is this similar with thoughts. Your thoughts can go off and daydream about whatever, but eventually they come back to being where you are in your ordinary life and your huh. mundane your mundane life and there's this kind of sense of returning and going off and returning but ultimately your daydreams do have to come back to your life and this resonated with all of you clearly i mean yeah. who found the who found this poem the guy who couldn't remember it yeah <laughs> <laughs> right but it resonated enough with you to recite it yeah. almost from memory well yeah and it's also going to be asked of me a lot right because that's <laughs> You know, we put that out as the idea of the record, and it's on the record. Sure. And I felt that it was important to kind of, you know, I, I when it was when we moved in that direction, then yeah, I was interested in in its concept because, like they were like Charlie and Oh were saying, you know, we were trying, we really wanted to do something different this time around and have the concept locked down, but the songs would just be, you know, going its natural way, like do makes right. They just, and then they just, you know, they have their own voice, and then their wisdom is sort of. It gets imparted later, you sure. know. And so when Charlie had that, I was like, you know what, sold. 
We gotta get the thing done. <laughs> I think, it's time I'm into it. I, I, think, I, I gather that it was just something that you. No, I don't want to say you stumbled upon it, but it was an idea that struck you at a time uh, that when you were contemplating this band and what you were going to do next. But is there anything about the notion that you just described, Charlie, that speaks to the trajectory of the band and where you are right now together, or Garcia where you are in life? Or this notion of being able to leave, but you uh, having this thing that you. Uh, always home back to. I mean, that's a, a fascinating concept on, at some point, on some level. Particularly as some of us enter midlife, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> right. have children, you right. start to really think yeah. about, you know, what it means to have a home and a, and a home base, particularly, yeah. you know, you guys travel a lot as well as musicians. So I'm now trying to apply a lot of meaning to a thing that maybe just seemed cool. <laughs> no, 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 believe me. <laughs> And uh, really, we we had a whether, lot of whether, yeah, whether or not it comes, yeah, arguments. whether or not it comes through, we, and I, I like to think it does, but we talked about it and we thought about it and we tried to find, really tried to find something that was meaningful for us yeah. mm -hmm. as this mm -hmm. this record because we put everything we have into writing the music, yeah, and so we want to present it in a similar way. And so yeah. we we talked about life and we talked about death and we talked about our hopes and we talked, we you know we went yeah. through we. We really, really did get into it, you know. The music, in a way, is kind of like trying to describe all the aspects of life, and it's an impossible goal. But yeah. but we want to, you know, touch on joy. We want to touch on sadness. We want to touch on fear. We want to touch on all these things that life is, and put that into the music. And and this this sort of theme of because we're we, you're right, we're in the middle of our lives right now. Um, we're in our 40s, so we have lots of memories to look back at, and we can lose ourselves in our memories. And we also have a lot of life ahead of us, so we can be constantly looking at, you know, what, you know, the decisions we're making now still have a lot of uh, potential to go in different ways. So uh, and we're responsible. I mean, myself included, we're responsible for other people's lives. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We're the first half, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So it, it is very much kind of being in the middle of the ocean, and and you know, daydreaming about this and that, and worrying about this and that. Yeah. But eventually, you know, you always have to come back to. Yeah. to the practical details of life and right. and uh it's not it's not to say that the boat is a prison in the middle of the ocean because you know you can leave but there is a there's a, a sort of a anchoring quality to it right where and i think the concept even though it came late the act of constantly searching for it is almost like the crow flying every every time we'd get together we'd have a concept it'd go out it'd come back we go that's not quite it but the uh, the discussions and just the thinking about it and the trying to put it together, it kept us motivated, it kept us writing, it kept us... And we even did things which uh, you know, forced our hand. We, we incorporated musical motifs, which we've never done before, in multiple songs throughout the record. We've never done that before, where we reused a theme in, I think, uh, three to four songs. Yes, yeah, recurring kind of... Yeah, and that was, that was, even though the concept wasn't kind of laid, wasn't laid out as crystal clear as we'd like, it was a way of forcing us to stay on that path. It was a way of right. forcing us to keep moving forward with that idea. And the conversation were just as important as writing the songs. Yeah. yeah. So. At, at the beginning, right from the beginning, we had to decide to make a record because we had made so many records and we loved them and we were proud of them. Um, but we didn't, you know, we didn't want to have just another record. Why are we making a record? It's just yeah. to make a record. It's, so we really, we, we struggled from the beginning to try and find some meaning to put into this music. And the struggle, and the funny, it's funny thing is the meaning didn't really come until the end. Sure. Um, the, it's like the intention came at the end of the record, which is, doesn't make any sense, but that's how it feels. Sometimes that's the way it works, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. You mentioned uh, a few things there, but I want to speak to the fact that as far as I can tell, it's been... What has it been? Eight years since your last record, right? So that's yeah. what people are saying. Yeah, 2009, accurate? so yeah. 2009. You, that's what people are saying. Is there something that we're missing? <laughs> no, I don't know. That's, 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 <laughs> we're, not, we're not counting. We're not counting. I, 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 people are like, I, this somebody is, said it. Like I've read these little things. A decade since their last release. Seven years since their last release. And I'm just kind of. Yeah, you don't know, know what, what the number is. So right. everyone is counting. When a band takes a break, uh -huh. a public break, people wonder what precipitated this gap. They view it as a gap. Mm -hmm. Whereas you know, I happen to know all of you do other things and. Uh, we're dormant, but, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I can tell by how much thought you put into what this was going to be, this record, and why are we even doing this? Like you had a philosophical mm -hmm. discussion, essentially. There is some weight to that time now, even just sitting here with you, 
Can you talk a little bit about what was going on in that nine, eight or nine, seven, eight, nine years, decade long <laughs> span? Eight babies have been born, yeah. you know, like... Life. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, we basically, at the end of it, Justin was a few years away from being a dad. Me and Charlie had one each and just two new ones, pretty much. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Uh, so, and then social scene and other music, you know, other requirements and... Um, yeah, and I think I think also after other truths, not necessarily because of the record, but leading up to the record, it just got to the point where we felt like everything else was taking us in different directions. We had done at that point six records, pretty much two years apart. Mm -hmm. Every two years we put out a record, and I think uh, it was just a natural slowdown. It was not not necessarily a hard stop or an accident. Well, the, the melodrama in the curiosity, if you will, mm -hmm. from people like me, I guess, or just mm -hmm. people as external to the band is like, was it close to not coming back? Yep. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. I, mean, I didn't think we were making this record. I didn't think so either. I didn't even think we were making this record till about three years into making the record. Yeah. <laughs> Has it been three years? No, three yeah. after we oh. started. After. It did, we weren't even really sure that it was... Like, we had started working on it and getting together and writing. Yeah. But even after three years of doing that, we weren't sure that we were actually going to finish. Right. It was, yeah. it was because on some level, this is a social yeah. thing, right? Yeah, I think we started. It's a creative thing, but it's this: you like each other, you like hanging yeah, out with yeah, each other. Yeah. So any excuse to do that, I assume, whether it turns into something for people that no, consume. No, I mean, sometimes, sometimes the jams are kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah, no, at the, at, believe me, at the end of the at the end of the the, the last show of Other Truths tour. You know, we were pretty ready to take a break from each other for a while. Oh, yeah. You know? Was that in Japan? Tai Taiwan? Ta Taiwan was the last show that I, in my mind. Anyway. Oh, man. I hear this on the show all the time. Taiwan does bands in. They just can't. <laughs> no, 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 Why no, are we no. doing this? I just, no, no, I just have a bit. But I think, I think what was starting to happen, at least from my perspective, as I was as a witness to it, yeah. um, was that, you know... I think you know we we sort of move and we evolved in our in this sort of natural pace, like you know how we make our music and how we want. And there was never really this desire within the band. I think after maybe history and rust, we just realized that you know we're not going to catch like Arcade Fire or we're not going to catch like even Broken Social Scene. We're just going to be in this world. Catch meaning and, like just. Become become like like bigger basically and, really know. make a living off it. yeah make a living like to make yeah. a living like we were really thought you'd commercially plateaued well no we just level. yeah we're, 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 and other than really really just being on the road all the time making money from do makes a think like as, as a living yeah yeah was going to be a little bit more of a challenge right. and 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 it, you know had you know for 20 year old selves that was fine because that was kind of our identity yeah. like we were you know in the Toronto mm -hmm. music scene and we had girlfriends that. Then became wives, and right. then they were cool wives. They dated musicians, but then you know, <laughs> but then we sure. had then we had children, yeah. and then all of a sudden you're like, oh man, three months in Europe and coming back with yeah. like a thousand mm -hmm. bucks, you can't cut it. Mm -hmm. You can't go yeah. back to your wife like that. So, right. you know, and I think at the end of Other Truths, it was just kind of a. I think the, the people were just sort of burnt out on the genre within ourselves. I mean, at least I was. I was just, yeah. I wasn't listening to post rock anymore, and I was just. Do you, you know, identify with this term? Because I saw it pop up in descriptions of your music. I choose to ignore it. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I'll call it post-rock. You but, would? Yeah, yeah okay. I, don't I just wonder. No, I've, okay. I've talked to other people who supposedly make this kind of music and they I bristle. Think it, I think it offended us at first. And then it was just convenient for record store employees yeah, no, to have a, you know, a corner to put stuff in. And it, in a way, it does describe kind of instrumental rock music. That's probably maybe a better term. But the... The term itself is more of a convenience than, the, than anything else. Oh, Ed, when you say you ignore it... When I say ignore it, I mean... the Basically what Charlie was saying, the idea that it, it's just used as an easy way to describe something. Just put it in a box. Yeah. Okay. We don't have to talk about it anymore. You're not offended by it, per I'm, se. I'm in terms not of offended by it, for, no. I found it really interesting, though. There's a post-rock subreddit. Yes. We did an AMA. <laughs> yes. And I, I saw a discussion on where we sit in the history of post-rock. Apparently we're second wave. Oh, so we're, we're, like we're post -rock? second wave. Oh, we're part okay. of the second wave. So <laughs> rock was just dead. Rock had died. Godspeed and Tortoise killed it. Okay. Right. Uh, and then we saw Godspeed and Tortoise and went, that's cool. And and uh, Mogwai and us were second wave. came in through the second door. 
And How then, many doors are we out And then the third door was Explosions in the Sky and Mono. Sure. And that's where the discussion turned into the third wave is now feedbacking. It hasn't, uh, the music is having a hard time evolving past the, what they are now calling crescendo core. <laughs> yes, I've heard that. I've heard <laughs> crescendo Sorry, core. I don't mean to laugh at it. No. <laughs> I don't want to end up on if, one of these subreddits being made fun of. But. So, so if you're in a crescendo core band, that's okay. We're not really. Right. But apparently, uh, uh, as, as as stubborn, persistent illusions has pro- proved in this community that uh, we... Uh, we bypass the dreaded crescendo core still. At second waivers, we can still. I, is this the Reddit now? I'm having trouble following <laughs> I, 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 this thread. Is there a way to refresh? I, 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 uh, I, I found it a very interesting conversation that no, I did not, not right. feel like joining in. <laughs> Well, you could have as a member I, of, the, I could have, of, of the second wave. Second wave, yeah. <laughs> second wave's not bad. It's not the first wave, but it's not bad. You're right there. You're right there. I attended your show at the Danforth Music Hall on Saturday. Congratulations. It was amazing. Thank, Thank you. The lighting, everything. Who did that? Who did all the lighting uh, stuff? His name is Bryce Kushner, and he was, he was a guy I worked with at Sonic Boob, and then he actually filled in on a couple tours with us. Uh-huh. Saxophone player. Uh, and saxoph- oh, saxophone okay. and keyboard. He played keyboard a bit. He has a project called Vitamins for You, which I don't know if they're still. I don't think he's doing that anymore. That but was his, his yeah. project for a while. It's a health food store. Nope, that oh, was his. It's an actual band. Like, okay. Sounds like, like a sounds like a health food store. There is a health food store in Winnipeg. It is okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where he's from? Okay, yeah. So um, it's an homage to the health food store. Yeah, yeah. and so it was an electronic. He does, uh, I think, drone performances and okay. such. Stuff, but now I think he's really focused in on this lighting thing. He's been doing it, right? Uh, mostly for electronic acts. Um, and so I saw something he had posted a couple months back that looked really cool, and uh, I asked him if he wanted to do the show. And so I he did like super excited, and there were orbs, there were like orbs behind all the amps, basically. There were mm-hmm. five orbs, and then there was like a strobe light line that would come on, or not a strobe light, uh, mm-hmm. it looked like fluorescent light, yeah, fluorescent, 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 yeah, yeah. and it would light up recurringly. And if you weren't careful, you might get dizzy. Yeah, and uh, it was very dark, and there were film projections, and some of it was live of you guys. Yeah, on, but all distorted yeah. snow. Well, TV they were um, they were uh, nighttime, night vision. Oh, but night night vision. Were night vision oh, cameras, cameras that he had oh. on stands that were in front of us and kind of tucked in between us, and mm-hmm. blending. And he was just blending them. So like, how? I know you haven't played. Like, that was your first show in a while, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How long has it been? I'm not, no, we played the time. island a year ago. That was a, that was two years ago. Two years ago. Twenty fifteen. Wavelength for the wavelength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so wavelength. But yeah. yeah. But was that your first time doing that kind of production, like the thing you did at the Danforth with the lighting and the? Yeah. Well, we've done, we've had film backing. Oh no, no, no! I mean, yeah. was that your first time working with Brett? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And we, I, I thought, I thought it was great. I, I mean, I, I got lost in it at one point and kind of misstepped a part of my own. And I was just look over to see, oh, I was like, are you gonna drive me, man? <laughs> <laughs> His eyebrows are raised. He's gonna go now, play now. Yeah. The show like, oh, was yes. okay. The show, in your estimation, was a success. Did you enjoy the show? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Me. Given I mean, given how prepared we were able to get, not because just because of scheduling, we just didn't have the time we would have liked to put into preparing right. for it. So it was a perfect blend of unpreparedness that created nerves that got us just near terror. Near, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> something, like that. something when when things are going right, and if you don't have any catastrophe to build on that kind of being on the edge actually really helps when terror sort of tips into euphoria it's yeah kind of like it. yeah i yeah. i noticed that you actually yeah. at one point you spoke and you prior to that i noticed you were jumping up and down and yeah. you were, i could tell like the release had happened in that piece and then you had to say something yeah that was yeah. that first time too because it was like it's it's a new one yeah and performing it live can be tricky because there's a lot of sort of moves that happen sure. and you need to hear a lot of things and and it's 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 what you know however long it is you can get like nine minutes into that song and be like oh no i forget the part you know yeah, yeah, yeah. nine minutes mm-hmm. into a song and we didn't do a very good job of doing it at soundcheck Fact. so pretty bad, <laughs> pretty bad. Like, we played it pretty horribly at soundcheck and we were like we were really like this is e-. and so i think i was actually when we went into the next song, uh, Fredericia, um, I, I, th- I think I must have been holding my breath because I was like, I was like, I felt like this rush, like, and I felt like lightheaded. Oh wow! And I was like, oh my god, I don't think I was breathing through that whole song. I mean, it was like, <laughs> like really like <laughs> just tense. like just super tense. And then I was like, yeah. we did it! <gasps> <laughs> you know, all this, uh, like, it was hard to see that because of the lighting. You guys were kind yeah. of mostly backlit, so I couldn't see your faces. But I, once you started, Charles, Charlie started bouncing up and down. I'm like, oh, there's something's going on. Like they're feeling yeah. an L on stage. You said terror, O-head. 
And <laughs> no, 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 I said terror. Someone said terror. You said barring any catastrophe, we have to talk about the catastrophes that led up to this show because I think they're significant. Oh, that, oh yeah. yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy. What yeah. do you mean, oh, Jimmy? The guy. <laughs> now now <laughs> that we tell the story. <laughs> now that he's, now he's fine. Oh, my God. Yeah, now the show's over and he's totally fine. And we're like, oh. Justin, you made a point of telling <laughs> the story mm -hmm. uh, during some banter. But yeah, oh, I, had, uh, I want to hear Ohad's perspective on it just because. Well, I think Jimmy, uh, Jimmy and Justin are so close. They're like brothers. Okay. I think he's the best one. Like, they're, 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 they're just, they're, 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 we call them the odd couple because they talk like they're married. <laughs> Right, so band, or they fight like them. <laughs> you have this show at the Danforth planned. It's a big album release show. Mm -hmm. Tell me, tell us, rather, what happened? I, I, okay, well, <laughs> you know, and 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 leading up to the like, getting that show is kind of important because Charles is. Um, relationship with Broken Social Scene and finding the correct date, like, you know, it had to happen pretty early on once we got it. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, that was an important part of the summer, you know, like on everybody's calendar. And yeah. then on Mother's Day, Jimmy, who works at the Three Speed, uh, Mother's Day brunch, they're apparently their busiest day, uh, be before a shift dropped a pot of boiling water on his foot. And because the other chef that works there was home for Mother's Day because she's a mother, she's right. a young mother, I think it might have been her first, too. She was like, I didn't want her to miss her first Mother's Day right. kind of thing. So he toughed it out and finished the shift. And, you know, I one of the guys in the opening band, Ben, from Mimico, works with them. And he, they were, apparently, he was telling me that he was just being stubborn. They were all like, go home, man. Like, you know, but he was like, I gotta do it. And then he came to do me. Is, sort of, is he up to, for? does he do this kind of thing normally? Does, is Jimmy like a guy that won't treat himself if he's not feeling well? Or uh, he's, the, he's got this, we both come from Ajax. Oh, and he comes from say no more. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. This is a pure Ajax people. Ontario story. Yeah, okay, yeah. I understand. No, sorry. And you know, it's that sort of, you know, he played hockey growing up. Yeah. And it was like, just that sort of like, come on, man, you can tough this out. Like, sure. I can do this. So, walk it off. You know, walk it off. And he walked it off and he walked it into, a, you know, a Doom Mix rehearsal because we didn't have so very few of them right. leading up to the show. And then we, at the end of Doom Mix rehearsal, I remember us going, like, hey, dude, I think you should probably go to the hospital. Like, you know, that's pretty serious. You burned your foot and it blistered up and, you know, you're playing drums. Uh, so he went to a walking clinic the next day, not the hospital. I think it's an important distinction right here is that he went, walked into a walking clinic and got annoyed at the wait time and went home and went to his metal band's rehearsal that night uh -huh. in which he plays double kick. And so, uh, yeah, so he got an infection. He woke up that night and he was, you know, foot, foot was a watermelon. His foot was a watermelon. Septic he, shot kind of he, thing? Well, not yet. He oh, not yet. Years. Okay. No. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump ahead. <laughs> Uh, it's important at this point to, to to let you know that we do love Jimmy. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I want yeah. you to understand I do appreciate that, yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he, uh, they told him he had to go to the Sunnybrook uh, burn set, uh, unit. And he had lots of stuff to do, I guess. And he waited two more days. And so this would be four days after the initial burn. Uh -huh. And he walked into Sunnybrook and they were like, Oh my, like, oh my God, you've gone septic. And it's, you know, it's gone up your leg. And it's all like it's reached his, you know. And you could lose your foot. You could lose your foot. We're going to cut off your foot. And amputate the foot. Amputate, yeah. amputate your foot. And he called me up and he was like, he was really upset. And I was like, I was really shocked. And and, and immediately I was like, well, we got to cancel the show. Like we have to cancel because it's, yeah. it's like two and a half weeks away. Right. You know, and people are going to travel to the show and all that kind of stuff. And, and we waited and waited and kind of waited to make the call and I guess that you know surgeons are kind of people who it's like a feather in their cap to get this guy on the stage they're right. gonna do it yeah. and so that's the word we got was these guys were gonna try and get Jimmy on stage rockstar surgeons rockstar yeah. surgeons are gonna patch this dude up and he's gonna get up on stage and play the Danforth music hall and so they patched him up they they took a they took a you know a, like a four by eight uh, inch like piece from the skin, the skin of his skin leg graft? Yeah, yeah, yeah. skin graft and put it on his foot oh. where the where the, the skin had been destroyed oh my god and uh and it was you know it was a major surgery and it and uh i guess it, but it was two two weeks before the show was the surgery yeah two weeks or so before the show and uh everybody was saying you know if it looks good we don't need to cancel the show everything's fine yeah um and so he got out out of the hospital he was riding around on his bicycle he was uh which he shouldn't you know, have been doing. Which right. Been, yeah. <laughs> Whiting his bicycle in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So, riding the subway, you know. And then, you know, I asked him, I said, why did you ride the subway? Like, to this doctor's appointment they had to go to. 
And he goes, oh, they, they want me to walk around on it, you know, so to get blood in it. I said, or, you know, to look like, you know, uh -huh. it, it's healthy for me to be walking around on it. And it's just a bandage. That, you know, he's just going to flip flop and a bandage on it. I said, but on the subway, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's some you, bad stuff on the subway. It's some bad stuff on the subway. Yeah. All right. So he ended up getting uh, it infected again. So on Thursday, he had to go back into the hospital. The show's Saturday. And the show's Saturday. And right. so we... You know, we actually... Had, don't forget the part where we literally had to intervene, all of us at the rehearsal, tell him. semicircle, and have Marv drive him. And Marv was our manager. Yeah. Adam Marv. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're going to the hospital. Like we, and it was 10 minutes where we're all just surrounding him going, you're, you're, you were going, 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 you're going, going to the hospital. <laughs> Could you see that it was? In oh yeah, no. Yeah. He had been there earlier that day because oh, they're tell. checking on it, and they had noticed an infection coming back, and they drew a black marker around the edge of that infection. And then about an hour into the jam, we were sitting outside, and he's got his foot up, and he's like, "What do you think?" And I'm like, "That's about four inches from the marker, just in the, on this rehearsal." Right. Right. So you got to go. And he's like, "Oh, I'll go, I'll, go to I'll go tomorrow morning." Okay, you know, yeah. we'll just finish a couple of songs. We're like, "No, Jim." No, no, you go now. no, you're going now, and you're right. going, not going to, you know, your clinic. Adam's going to take you to your the burn unit at Sunnybrook, like right. where they know you and they can expect you. And right, and they and then it, even all the way to Friday. Friday, he was. I'm not sure they're going to let me out tomorrow for the show because he had to have aggressive antibiotic treatment to treat this infection, and. They uh, so we had the drummer from Mimico, Nick Nick Curvin, come sit in on a rehearsal on the Friday. On the yeah. Friday, and yeah. we were and we were saying to him, I was like, Nick, we're just gonna run through this. We can take a moment and we can say bye to Ohad. Ohad has to go grab the yeah. kids. Oh, yeah, thank you for being here. Thank and, you um, for having sorry me. Sorry you uh, have to leave, but uh, we can yeah. see you. Yeah, see you, Ohad. This hap this has happened on the show before. So someone, yeah, yeah, has, someone has to leave. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. That's fine. I don't take it personally. Should I take it personally? No, no. It's not my fault. <laughs> These kids would be standing outside of the school going, thank you, Dad. Yeah, no, no, it's good. Yeah. I think should... you offended him, though. Well, we right. stood in a semicircle and told him he had to go. That's basically, <laughs> we sat here and we made him go. I think we had an that's... intervention with him. We had an intervention with him. You have to go pick up your kids. Sorry. Um, so we had Nick Curvin come sit in. Yeah. And basically, because we had such limited time, I said to Nick, I said, we're just going to run to the set and I'm going to point at you. <laughs> when, it's when, it, when, when, it, when, it, when, when I think we're going to need you to come in uh -huh. and we won't set you up on a drum set we'll set you up with a little percussion station and you can do this because there's a few things that you know Dave you have two drummers you have two drummers know, but yeah. they do you know there's only a few like, there's a, a lot of things that uh, you know um, that Jimmy and Dave do that are like syncopated rhythms and that are kind of important or, or big cymbal swells that you know introduce yeah. new parts and poor Nick was probably, he was just sitting there like with his hands on his cheeks as I was pointing at him. I was like, you know, this part is, you know, 10 minutes later, this part, you know. <laughs> and then the whole, I don't know if you remember at the show, at the whole end of our show, like the end part was four songs blended. Like, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Like right through them. Yeah. So we started playing that and I guess Nick was, you know, and then Jimmy walked into the rehearsal in the middle of all that and, and we were kind of mix of like what like what are you doing here like yeah, did yeah, you yeah. escape did you leave the hospital right without them like are you doing this yeah yeah you know, are you walking yeah. are you jaywalk <laughs> or a wall yeah. yeah yeah and uh no uh so he came and sat down and started playing he played the rest, rest of those songs at the end nick was like thank god you're here <laughs> you know? and basically what he said was they had to let him go because there was a, a an industrial accident oh. somewhere and they needed the beds and he oh. So they just gave him these sort of horse pill antibiotics, antibiotics yeah, that antibiotics. make him feel real weird. But yeah. there he was at the show. He played the show. And he played amazing at he the did. show. Yeah. Yeah. And but, uh, what happened after the show? I, I just We drank a lot. He Where? didn't. <laughs> he did not. He can't, he's not allowed. <laughs> no. Where is he? Still? He's, he's just got home from the hospital now. He went, he like, went back to the hospital? Right yeah. back to the hospital afterwards. And uh, uh, basically the this time the antibiotics were working fine. Okay. And uh, now he doesn't have to be a hero about anything. Yeah. Right. He can well, stay home and relax yeah. and heal himself. Yeah. Okay. It Hopefully. was very. But it dramatic. was yeah. It was it was a little bit scary. I mean, and we really actually did have a short window of rehearsal. And in fact, we had exactly zero rehearsals with everybody in attendance. We did, you know, Mike Barth, the trumpet player, 
uh, did sound check. Yeah, he just came for sound check. So, yeah. um, so it, we, we were pretty pretty tense to play the new songs and even remember the old songs. So, well, I, n- other than knowing this and hearing you articulate it <laughs> on stage, I it didn't come across. Well, again, that's the thing. This is when you're. I think it in a way it helped because nervousness does get transformed into excitement and and you know a certain amount of joy and I, and that's certainly how I felt on stage yeah. like there was all this nervous energy and I looked out at the audience and they looked just they just looked beautiful all these smiling faces yeah, and these hands yeah. up and I looked around at the band and I'm like I love these people you know <laughs> yeah. this is really it's, we're here we are making music that we love people together that we love for people that we love there's nothing wrong yeah. here this is excellent and, and, and I felt this kind of just you know, yeah. complete relief. And, yeah, and, me too. Yeah. And then Bryce was like lightening it up and it was also cool. It was like, awesome. That's the thing that's, you know, because I know I made a big speech about being uncool and how, yeah. how fun it is and liberating now it is to be in your 40s in a, a, in a, in a post-rock band yeah. and be really, you know, like play six string fretless basses with like no no irony involved right. like zero why, irony why are you always bringing up the six string fretless bass because <laughs> like? it's cool but it's not cool but it's cool you know what i'm saying rick danko made it kind of cool yeah from the band he was yeah. kind of cool but then yeah you, there's a prog rock connotation like yeah king crimson and whatnot but just close your eyes you just man. gotta close your eyes man <laughs> yeah. close it's your eyes the and waves, embrace it yeah feel the waves of sound man well you know in, in in the context of what we've been talking about in terms of uh, a philosophical understanding of what the band means to you and how long it's existed. It was fascinating watching you on stage grappling with the knowledge that it was almost done. Like an era might, if if Jimmy wasn't there or if Jimmy couldn't continue, like that really mm. informed that show for me. Wow. This like notion that me you were too. celebrating, <laughs> you were celebrating the fact that you were not only kind of back, so to speak. Right. But that you're able to continue, like, mm-hmm. that's got to be a weird feeling. Like, because I I did get the sense from particularly Justin's uh, banter that you guys are in a reflective mood about doing right. say think. You were talking about yeah. twenty years ago we played with King Cobb Steely, and mm-hmm. you know you were talking yeah. about someone called insinuated you might be a prog rock band, <laughs> yeah. and you know yeah. then you're one of your guys almost can't make it. I mean that's got to be a weird yeah. thing to be in a band this long. And contemplate its mortality. Yep. Yeah, I didn't really, I didn't put it that way. I mean, I think for me, it was just the focus had it. I, you know, once we got hit the stage, I think my main goal was like, like ultra focus. And then as the songs kind of went past, and they were sounding good. Yeah. And not only were they sounding good, we were playing them excellently. I thought, you know, like people yeah. were doing, and, mm-hmm. and and then even I think every song started to get more and more. Like relaxed sound and like more just like I almost felt like everybody went we, we're doing it like we did this one you know we got to the finish line we're going to win the race you know, like, we really got to win the race this time there's such a gap between that <laughs> practice rehearsal mode and the show isn't there like, yeah. there's so much uncertainty so much I think some people maybe who don't play music don't realize how much uncertainty is in that gap between <laughs> You know, we didn't quite get it. Yeah. <laughs> so when you walk on stage and you say you had a kind of a rough sound check, that's a weird feeling. Like your adrenaline's mm-hmm. going, your muscle memory yeah. and your adrenaline are maybe fighting with each yeah. other. <laughs> and the, first thing, the first thing that happened to you was, uh, oh, we're going to play this intro tape. And we go out and press the sampler and the lights go down. And we're like, it's going to be really dramatic and cool. And we played like a loop that appears in half, like halfway through one of the songs. Oh, we played the, the wrong song button. And we're like, <laughs> Ah, all right, here we go. That probably, in a weird way, calms you down. All right, we yeah, made our first yeah. mistake. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, what is uh, uh, next for the for for the band? What is? I mean, we've uh, Jimmy's obviously got to recover. Yes, yeah. totally. And then what happens with you? Makes I think we're working on booking a few shows in November. Um, uh, really, we're kind of. It's unfortunate we had really tried, or hoped to have this record out last year. Um, and because last year was much more open in the calendar department, at least for me, and I think for... I, I wonder about this, Troy, because yeah. I, I feel like you alluded to this during our talk that you were with Broken Social Scene, uh, or maybe that was before we started rolling, I can't remember, but anyway, yeah, this Broken Social Scene record's coming out. Yes, it's coming out in July, which is terrible <laughs> timing. I mean, the, I had three or four years of essentially, you know, making pottery and going to art school and like, you know, oh. just kind of like, just... 
looking at my watch, sort wondering what's going what's to happen. Yeah. Sort of downtime. Being yeah. a dad, you know, yeah. it was, I really enjoyed it. But then all of a sudden, you know, the plan was, in my mind anyway, was to have the Do Makes I Think record come out in 2016 and we could tour it and release it. Right. And then the Broken Social Scene record would come out. And, but there was actually a moment when they were both scheduled to come out on the same day. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, that wasn't cool. But, but, but thanks to the benefit of so many uh, conflicting opinions, Broken Social Scene's record release got delayed right. until July. So uh, at least there's some overlap. Right. Um, but uh, but basically, yeah, uh, Broken Social Scene is a is a larger machine in terms of its uh, touring schedule and planning and all that. So uh, yeah. so we basically and income. And income, yeah. We, like, so I mean, we, we basically work, we're working around Broken Social Scene's schedule right now. So when there's a, a gap, when we know that Social Scene's not going to be touring, yeah. then we will take that opportunity. And right now it's looking like November. November. Is, okay. is the time you know, but as you're talking about this and saying like, you know, if, if to reflect on what you're just saying about it, oh, this year, record could have come out a year ago. I don't think it would have been the same record. I think that year was a crazy year for, in all of our lives that informed how we mixed this record and then mm -hmm. informed how we got Marianne Collins to do the artwork. And then, you know, as unfortunate as the timing is with Broken Social Scene and us, I think that the record ultimately benefited, you know, we may not get to do as much touring, don't really care. Everything kind of like, happened rather, for a reason. Yeah, I would yeah. rather have it be... I can't imagine that year not... the extra year it took to finish this record not having... A profound impact on the way it sounds currently. I know I, what you I mean. Think, I don't I, think it would. And I agree. Record. I don't yeah. think I, I'm not really speaking artistically. I'm just speaking in terms of like, darn it, planning. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. It would have been nice. If it yeah, yeah, yeah. No. yeah. Well, you so, know what though? Last year was a banner year for Ohad and I too in our film score. Right. Like if, right, we okay. had, if we had taken that off to do touring, right, we might not be in the position that we're in and right now. And you were doing your song a week project, which yeah. was a home I had rock. Like, yeah. Well, I had like like 50 subscribers then. <laughs> No, but you still, that was something you were doing for your own. Yeah, yeah. That was a project. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. had to oh, do yeah. it. And yeah. Charlie, you were working with Gordowney on the Secret Gordani Cast. Gordowney and I toured with Feist after the Broken Social Scene. So, I mean, I've been, you know. On this tour? Um, with Metals. Oh, so, the last yeah, record. So, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. So, yeah. it's been, you know, I have been involved in lots of other stuff. But, uh, right. yeah, I think, uh, in a, essentially, bro uh, Do Make Say Think has kind of become, since we've been around for so long, we're kind of everybody's back burner project. Mm. It's something that's always kind of cooking there in the back, but they're, they're like, you know, Ohad and Justin mm. have their film score work, which is more important in terms of income and family sure. kind of time. But in your hearts, in your core, in your, you're Do Make Say hey, Think people. I'm always... <laughs> no matter what you're doing, you're really the guy from Do Make Say Think, the guys from Do Make Say Think. Yes, and also... Uh, do, uh, the uh, do, the best do make say thing cover band in the world. Yes, I've heard you. I've heard you say this. <laughs> we have to, well, we have to, we make these records and then we go. Oh crap! We have to play this. And right. We because... sit around listening to the record, going, "Who plays that part again? What well, is that?" I, you record chunks of stuff and then you kind of have to sort of piece it together mm -hmm. a lot of the times. Is that right? Like you do a lot of like post. A lot of the songwriting's in the post. I think. Yeah. I yeah. would say. And I think we get a skeleton and then we. Yeah. You know, it, it was unfortunate because one of my favorite songs on the record, I, you know, that kind of changes, but I, there's a song called Horribulation. Yeah. And I was like, oh, when we, when we dropped that in Toronto, like when we first booked the show, I'm like, oh, it's going to be so killer. And as the date got closer and, the, and, the, and, the, and we realized the reality of our, our schedules meant that there weren't going to be a whole lot of rehearsals or, you know, then that song's. Like I just would listen to it and get really sad because I knew we wouldn't have the time to put into it. There's right. so many overdubs like so, so many parts. We did parts. so much work to that song right. and post that right. to pull it off live would take like at least three, if not four, rehearsals on that alone. Right. You know, just right. to, to get it close. Just to get it to a close. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I just and possibly I had, more people. Yeah. Yeah. No, so you know, and so I, I, I had to kind of maybe, uh, you know. Coming to those realizations, it's a it's a tough one sometimes. Mm -hmm. Right, kind of yeah. when you have to do, when you have to learn <laughs> something. I mean, I understand when bands are kind of they write their songs and then they get performances. Yeah, and so then after they make their record, they're like, oh yeah, we performed this song a thousand times. Right, and play mm -hmm. this. You know? Right, that's not our case. We don't do that. So right, yeah. but I mean, I I. Also, I was saying that Do Makes You Think has kind of become a back burner project, but I do mm. have to say that there is an enormous, enormous amount of pride that we have in this project. Like, no, we absolutely. Really do, we really do 
it's it's uh, it, it is in a way you said it's kind of our core, but it really is is, is central to kind of who we've become as musicians over the last 20 years. It really is a big part of it. I, I will say, having not seen you in a few years, like I was just overwhelmed by the talent of this band. Like just everyone in the band is so high caliber as a player and just, and you know, watching some of you switch, switch onto guitar and bass and, and just watching Ohad play or hearing what he comes up, it's ridiculous. Like He's it's crazy a, at guitar, it's, huh? He's all, crazy you're at all, that instrument. You're, you, all, you're all, partic- and the two drummers, you know, you got your Grateful Dead, you got your Fugazi, you got your Pavement, whoever's got two drummers, but you guys with the two drummers, it's unbelievable. Yeah. So anyway, I'm, I don't mean to end this uh, on a full gush, but I, I, I'm happy you're doing stuff, and uh, it was great to see you play. Is uh, And the new record is available on Constellation. Yes, C- Constellation Records. Yeah. CSTRecords.com if people want to go to a website. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and do you guys have a thing? You have a website, don't you? Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. do makes anything dot com. It seems... Yeah. Uh, it needs an update. It's if, been updated, but it's, it's updated not. For the record, uh, it's, it's really not. not. I didn't see it there actually. I was looking for it before. Oh, it's all that, the, all the album oh, okay. and like links to yeah. media stuff. It's there. I can, yeah. Oh, it's there. You can go to <laughs> doingsanything dot com and <laughs> it, we, hear the new record. It's not very well um, maintained, or uh, right. like we don't have a constant gardener to take care of. The, sure. You know, pluck who, the who has the password for the website? I don't know. Adam. Your uh, manager, okay. Yeah, I think so. Manager yeah, slash trumpet player. Slash trumpet player, And yeah. he has somebody. He's got a person. Oh, okay. they're, they're out west. I didn't mean the person. I, I know, and I think it's and a I great think they design. did a pretty good job. Yeah. No, it's a nice you know, <laughs> I just was looking for your Danforth musical uh, details because I was like, when are they on stage? And I didn't... I'm just complaining. I'm now I'm doing a kind of a Yelp review of your website. I <laughs> didn't mean to do that. Is there a song from the new record that we can play for people right now that one of you can choose? How about her revelations? Oh, That's the one Justin was talking about. Yeah, imagine us playing this live. But you will you ever play it live? Or yeah, play? yeah. yeah I'm it. really excited to have four pianos on stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <totally. laughs> All right. Well, this is it. Uh, Justin and Charlie and Ohad and Winnie. Winnie the dog. Winnie's. Hi, Winnie. Winnie. Winnie wants something. Thank you so much for being on the show. And it's uh, like I say, I'm so happy you're. You're back, so to speak, and best of luck with everything. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Let's dedicate this to Jimmy and his voice. (laughs) (laughs) That's probably important. Okay. Yeah. Although, honestly, I have to admit, his personality suits a peg leg pretty damn well. (laughs) (laughs) You were saying that.
That was Horripilation by Do Make Say Think from their excellent new record, Stubborn Persistent Illusions. Thank you to Ohad and Charles and Justin of Do Make Say Think for having me over to Charles' house and talking about their band. That was fun. I hope it was informative for you. And fun. Also fun for you. This is the 330th episode of the Creative Control Podcast, which is available on all your finer podcast platforms, iTunes, Audio Boom, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, Overcast, and more. Every single episode of the show is also available on my website, which you can visit. It's uh, vishkana.com. We're also, Creative Control that is, also on Facebook. You can like our page and follow us there. You can also follow us on Twitter at Vish Creative. I'm at Vish Kana. And a version of this show airs every Wednesday at noon Eastern Standard Time around the world at CFRU.ca. Or if you're in the area, CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph. You can also visit patreon.com slash creative control to make a flexible monthly donation to keep the podcast going and view some t-shirts that I have uh, both for sale and as gifts for people who make a monthly pledge, so please consider doing that. This episode would not be possible without our sponsors, Pizza Trocadero in Guelph. You can call them for pickup or delivery at 519-829-2444 or check them out at trocaderoguelph.ca. Also, the bookshelf, an independently owned uh, bookstore, bar, music venue, movie theater, located at 41 Quebec Street. That's in Guelph as well. Learn more about them at bookshelf.ca. And for some excellent, excellent coffee, Planet Bean Freshly Roasted Fair Trade Certified Organic Coffee. Visit planetbeancoffee.com for more information about how you too can taste some of the finest coffee in the world. That's it for another episode. More episodes to come. I uh, hope you will go to all of the aforementioned podcast platforms and download episodes, subscribe to the podcast, Follow us, like us, tell people to like us, tell your friends about the show, uh, you know, review the show, rate the show, all those things. It all helps. And other than that, I hope you're having a lovely summer. It's summertime where I am uh, at this point in time and geography, so hopefully you're having a nice summer if it's summer where you are. And if not, hopefully your summer is coming soon. Anyway, I will talk to you very soon. Goodbye for now. <laughs>